Well, when I think about you, I think about you versus Edgar. Those fights kind of cemented my love for mixed martial arts. How often do you find yourself uh, reminiscing about those fights? Uh, and if it's not against Frank Edgar, were there any fights that you find yourself thinking about a lot? I mean, I don't really look back on, I don't really look back on the past, you know, too much. Um, it was cool to be a part of them and it was great, but, um, you know, as you grow older, there's, there's always like new goals and new, um, like new stuff you want to, you want to concentrate on, you know, I look back on it and it was like, yeah, that was, that was a good fight. I could have done this, whatever, but, um, uh, there's a lot of good fights who I had, you know, just, um, uh, Jim Miller, Diaz, I fought him three times, um, uh, you know, Florian, you know, you look back at, at just kind of like all the bits and bits and pieces of those. And it was cool. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Your, your last fight was in 2018 against Nick Lenz. Uh, you talked yeah. uh, extensively about the issues you've had with the UFC. As most are wondering, my understanding is that you're no longer under contract with the UFC. Are you? Or are you not retired? Um, I haven't really made up my mind yet. Um, you know, I've been doing a lot of different projects uh, this past like five years. You know, um, my career changed after my title fight because. I really realized um, that it wasn't like um, like I wasn't going to get paid. Really, nobody's going to get paid what, like like what they're worth. And that's when I started to get to get into other stuff, like like remodeling houses, you know, trying to flip houses and try to make money, like to where I'm not dependent on you know, on the UFC. And, um, and that's a scary thing to do when you're going in the cage against maybe a person that, you know, is focused on being the best. And, and, you know, that's how I was at the beginning of my career. Like, I don't care about money. I don't care about money. But then once you start having kids and, and, and you start understanding that, you know, this, this, this is just paying the bills right now. Like what happens in the future? And uh, so that's kind of when my career changed. And, um, you know, there was a lot of other stuff I was doing. And um, fighting just became a hobby that, that paid okay. <laughs> Where do you kind of fall right now? Are you leaning to more towards saying retired? Or do you sometimes get that itch to, to step back? And I presume it probably won't be yeah. in the UFC. Yeah, no. No, I would definitely want to go with, like, a Bellator or, or something. Um, right now, I'm leaning towards competing again at least one more time, right? Uh, college wrestling was always great because you know that's your last match. Right. And, uh, you know, I like to, to, to kind of have a, um, you know, an ending point and closure. But, um, right now I have a ton of stuff going on to where, you know, I can't really concentrate on choosing that, you know, and really making that choice. Um, but you know, it's, it's probably coming in the next, next month. You know, and and uh, if I do choose to do it, then, you know, I'll have to call up um, a couple of promotions and check what we can do. Have you had any conversations with them recently? Have they reached out to you? You know, I talked to Scott Coker a little bit, and um, that was about a year ago because I was really gung-ho about a year ago um, just because I – you know, it was a lull. COVID just happened. And, you know, I talked to him a little bit and he's like, let's get through this COVID. And then you can really choose like, like what you're going to do, you know? And, um, because he was struggling too. I mean, everybody was, everybody was struggling. And, um, you know, he had a lot of, 
a lot of contracts to fulfill and and um yeah we'll see what happens yeah i know you had taken a pretty long break uh, while your wife was getting her master's degree uh has she got the master's degree uh yet and if so uh, what was it in yeah she got her master's degree in uh, functional nutrition, um, uh, healing, chronic, different, uh, kind, kind of like, you know, holistic approach and um, um, just helping people through more of a holistic way of, of how to heal your body. Oh, that's absolutely wonderful. And mind. That's absolutely wonderful. Yeah. I'm actually in grad school right now. Uh, and <laughs> let me tell you, that is freaking tough. So congratulations to her. Dude, we just had a we just had a new baby at the time. She was in master's school, you know, and, and, uh, yeah, you go through those times and it's, it's like, you look back and it's like, how did we even get through that? <laughs> props to the both of so you. For it was sure. fun. Yeah. Props to the both yeah, of you. Yeah. I, I want to go back for a sec. Uh, when you had signed that eight fight contract with the UFC, I believe it was back in 2014, pretty quickly into that contract, Dana White, according to you, I kind of urged you to retire. Why do you think that was? Yeah. Well, I mean, that's classic, um, um, you know, lock him up in a long contract, which he tries to do with, you know, a lot of the big name guys, guys and girls. And, um, you know, especially once they're closing towards the kind of end of their career, because, um, you know, it's hard to get through eight fights at times, you know, that's a lot of fights. And, you know, he, he kind of knows he can ask, you know, halfway through like, Hey, you know, you should retire. And, uh, um, it's just, you know, classic promoter stuff. Now signing a uh, contract like that, I imagine that there's a lot of talks with your management. Was there any hesitancy when, when getting that, that contract, like eight fights, that is a lot of fights. Was there any hesitancy in not wanting to sign that? Well, at the time, and, and that's kind of where it got, um, where they were buying out strike force, they were buying out everybody, and there was nowhere else to go. There was Bellator and then the USC. And I actually had just left my management company because um, it just – the numbers weren't making any sense like on what I was making, you know, to pay a person, you know, to do that. And, uh, you know, Dana called me in and, and he wanted to do the contract and, and, uh, you know, I just like, I was coming off, you know, two or three losses and, and, uh, you know, it was tough. And, uh, you know, I just went ahead with the contract and, you know, just not knowing how the landscape was going to change. Um, you know, Bellator was going to get a new promoter. One SC was going to, um, you know, start coming up even more. Um, you know, there's just a lot of, a lot of ways to make money, to make good money through a lot of other promotions. Yeah. And that's something as a spectator and as a you know, MMA journalist, I'm certainly noticing now, there seems to be a lot more opportunity and there seems to be a lot more top UFC fighters moving on different promotions and, and seemingly getting a lot more opportunities. You know, Mighty Mouse going to one, Corey Anderson, yeah. guys like that going to Bellator. So it's, it seems like a yeah. pretty good time to be a fighter, you know? Yeah, it's a great time. Um, you know, but is it ever a great time right now in the history? Um, you know, like people don't understand what we have to go through, um, you know, and, and like at the end of the day, you know, a lot of guys are just, a lot of guys and girls are just, um, they're just paying the bills, you know? And then once it's over, it's like, you got to jump into a job or, and, and not that that's what you, you weren't supposed to do, but like you should have, um, a little bit of retirement you should have uh um like health insurance you should have a lot of stuff if you've spent some time with the ufc there should be some a lot of stuff in place you know for like when you're done yeah 
It's, it, I mean, I can't even imagine. That seems like a really scary time when fighters are deciding yeah. to hang up the gloves and step away because you, you're totally right. I mean, sometimes a lot of fighters are, you know, that I've talked to are preparing for their future, but a lot just like kind of have to stop and then they have no idea what's next. Yeah, yeah. No, it's, uh, it's crazy. And I'm, I'm, you know, I'm glad I, I realized early, even though it hurt my career. Um, but, I'm glad I realized early that, that, uh, you know, I can't depend on them. You know, I can't depend on that job. I, it's, it's, it's definitely something that, that, uh, you got to plan for. And, and, um, yeah, it's just one of those things. Do you see that changing as more fighters like begin to speak up? Do you think that the UFC will start making those like necessary accommodations they're they're not gonna do it. There just has to be laws and rules that are put in place to do it. Because I mean, it, it goes with any business. Like, who's just gonna give away? Who's just gonna change up and you know do good if they've if they've made a ton of money off what they've done, right? Yeah. Uh, so you know, like Dana and the USC aren't gonna just realize like, hey, you know what? let's let's start taking care of these guys more you know no they're it's all about numbers and it's all about uh, you know the bottom line and putting money more money into their pockets what has to change is that um, there's has to be laws and rules that that protect us you know because if you th if you think about it there's no rules protecting us contractually can you know protecting us like financially if they could get a guy to fight on a main card main pay-per-view for a hundred dollars there's no rules that say like you can't do that <laughs> you know um you know uh so it's it's uh we're really trying to get more laws and rules to to help protect us because the UFC is protected with, you know, a boatload of lawyers on, like, on staff. And, uh, you know, there's nobody really helping us, you know, a couple managers. But that's about it, you know. And a lot of those managers are more tied to the UFC than, you know, they're more loyal to the UFC than they're loyal to us. That but, is um, super you know, scary. And then the lawsuit, yeah, you know, and then the anti, you know, the antitrust lawsuit going through. Um, that's a big one. We're gonna we're gonna check where you know how that goes, and and um, yeah, I mean the, you know, the landscape is kind of is kind of set to to have some change, and we'll see. We'll see if it happens, but you know the UFC, the UFC, the UFC is not going to change on their own. Yeah, yeah. Well, those changes need to happen. Uh, I certainly hope that they do. What would you advise? You know, current prospects, those who are UFC bound. What would you? What piece of advice would you offer them uh, right now? Oh man, don't don't get caught up in the hype train of the UFC, right? Always. You know, you got all these guys and girls that, you know, are like, like trying to be buddies with them. And, and that's not the case, you know, um, get the most money. Like Eddie Alvarez is a great example of, of a guy that, you know, did his career right. He never got focused on being in the UFC. Once he, he built his name, then he went there. You know, and then when he had his name, you know, he left. Um, he's 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 done a phenomenal job, like on his career, with contracts. You know, and another thing I would uh, try to tell guys is, you know, have a business, like start a business on the side. You know, yeah, it's 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 hard to do and train and try to be the best, but um, if you're not relying on them. You know, it's, it's, you can step away at any time and be like, you know, I'm going to hold out. 
yeah. you know, or you don't have to take the fights, right? That's what they bank on, right? Is you, you need money, you're hungry, you got to take the fights, whatever they offer you. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, before we go here, I don't want to take too much more of your time. I know Frankie Edgar is amongst the top of that list. I don't see him being released from the UFC anytime soon, so it's probably not likely. But do you have a dream uh, opponent for this um, last matchup of yours if it were to happen? Yeah, I guess the Edgar fight would be great, but, um, you know, that wouldn't happen. Uh, uh I don't know. I like, I really have to check like what promotion I would end up with and, and, you know, who's there. Um, there's a lot of good guys, a lot of studs out there now trying to, trying to understand like, you know, to look at a guy and like, you know, I want to go up against him because I see, you know, his holes or, you know, he's great at this, you know, and I want to beat that. And, uh, you know, that's why I love the sport. It's interesting. And, and, you know, just because you beat, just because you beat a guy who beats a guy doesn't mean you can beat that other guy. You know, it's, it's styles make, um, you know, a lot of this, the sport interesting. And, and, uh, you know, it's, it's cool. It's addicting. You know, you want to, you want to compete and you want to train to do that. And, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's hard once you start winding down, like, ah, you know, I want to get back in there. I want to start training and, uh, you know, train and compete, but we'll see what happens. Well, regardless, you've had an absolutely phenomenal career and whatever comes next, the best is yet to come undoubtedly. Gray, I appreciate the time. I'm going to leave the floor to you. If there's anything uh, you'd like to say, anyone you'd like to thank, how can people find you on social media? Yeah, I keep it pretty basic, uh, Gray Maynard. And, um, no, I appreciate everybody. Um, you know, we're getting this sport, um, you know, to be better each and every day. And um, we just got to keep it going.